Hey, welcome to season three of the Sales Factory. I'm your host, Coach Carol. I hope this audio finds you doing well, no matter where you're at in the world. I know we are expanding our listener base every single day, and I'm grateful and honored that you would invest your time with me and allow me to um, pour some knowledge into your business. It's my goal to help entrepreneurs all around the world, and uh, the podcast is just one of our ways that we do that. Um, you know, also provide coaching and, and consulting and speaking, but uh, the podcast is an awesome way for you to get granular tactics uh, so that you can implement them and grow your business so that you can live out your dreams and work more efficiently. So without further ado, here's this episode of The Sales Factory. Hey everybody, it's Coach Carol. Welcome to The Sales Factory. Uh, quick little note, uh, we're going to be changing up the format some here. I, I really have been talking to a lot of you through either uh, tweets, DMs on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, some of you have been emailing me, DJ at CoachCarol.com, uh, and really just kind of give me some great feedback on the podcast. And uh, I was talking to uh, a guy that's becoming a, a good friend of mine, Josh Latimer, and uh, he said, DJ, you got you got to spend more time on your podcast, man. Uh, people love the content. The stickiness is crazy. Uh, and, and so, you know me, I'm all about building, you know, this culture of, you know, hustle and, and just the mentality of going out and chasing your dreams and living fearlessly. And so, uh, I actually interviewed uh, Nathan Jamel, and that's what you're about to listen to uh, on this podcast. But I wanted to tell you, he's got a new book coming out, and uh, Serve Up, Coach Down is the title of it. In the interview, I completely got that backwards. You guys, if you've been listening for a while, you know I'm a little bit dyslexic. Uh, but I, I really want to urge you to go get this book because it's something that – I have not been able to find any information on. And it's that middle management, right? Because when we try to start getting out of our businesses, uh, we have to have managers. And so this book is for that. It's mastering the middle uh, and both sides of leadership. So it's talking about those people in your company that have to serve up to you and then coach down to your other team members. So um, check it out. I posted a link on Facebook. Um, if you're not on our email list, you need to do that. You can send me an email, dj at coachcurl.com. I'll make sure I get you taken care of and put on there uh, so that you can get, uh, honestly, a lot of our blog posts and stuff that we're getting out. Amanda's really helping me get a lot more stuff coming to you guys. It, it's just really talking about cranking up the content and, and getting this out. But the interview with Nathan is amazing. I think there's a lot that you can take away from it. Super excited for season three. Uh, this is kind of like the opener. And, uh, you know, I was going to wait, but uh, I'm just going to take massive action because like I coach you guys on, that means massive results. So uh, without further ado, I hope you enjoy this interview with Nathan Jamal and, uh, and, and really get subscribed to the podcast because uh, we're about to start dropping a ton of content. Uh, I'm going to be recording 86 episodes over the next 10 days. So uh, it's going to be crazy. I hope you guys love it. Make sure to, to leave us a review as well. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud or wherever it may be, um, make sure you go and leave us a review that helps other people find it. And uh, if there's ever anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Here's to your success. Enjoy the sales factory. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Sales Factory. I'm your host, Coach Carol, back with another episode here in Season 3. And today, super excited, I got an awesome guest for you. Uh, if you guys remember from last season, I found this really cool analytical data tool on the backside of Facebook on my Coach Carol page. You guys can follow me there, hashtag Coach Carol on all social media. Uh, but it was an affinity, an audience affinity, which means that if you're following me on Facebook, Facebook takes all their data, and then they go out and they say, hey, look, here's some other pages that your audience may like. And Nathan was one of them. So Nathan Jamel with me today. He's an expert. He's an author. He's uh, he's just an all-around great guy. This dude does tons of speaking. He's written several books, uh, the Leadership Playbook, the Sales Leaders Playbook, and the Sales Professionals Playbook. But he's also got a new book coming out here in, in, in the uh, upcoming months called Coach Up, Serve Down. Nathan, is that right? I got you right on that? Serve Up. And Serve coach up. down. Coach down. I knew I was going to blow that. Sorry. So right. I'm super excited because Nathan has spent the last two decades helping coaching leaders and organizations on how to build winning cultures and helping great leaders become great coaches. Nathan's passion and enthusiasm is said to be felt in every one of his keynotes and workshops. 
Nathan understands the difficulties that many leaders face in balancing the job of running the business and developing employees. We're all struggling with that, right? As a business leader in corporate America and a small business owner for over 20 years, Nathan has a great deal of personal experience in the role of a leader and a coach. He's worked with many Fortune 100 companies, and today he's here to drop a little knowledge for us in the sales factory. Nathan, thanks so much for being a guest. Thanks, brother. It's good to be here, man. Absolutely, man. So we're going to hop right right into this. You know, that's that's always the fancy poly, polished off version. But uh, let's let's go back before you were this expert author. And, and let's talk about your come up story a little bit. Give, give the audience a little bit of background on your hero's journey. You know, DJ, I'm just a working schmuck, man, um, <laughs> and always have been. I, I, my, my first sales job was was working for Circuit City. Circuit City, um, man, I want to say it's, I was a sophomore, or junior in high school, and that progressed and graduated high school. And you know, I went to college, and the counselor said you probably shouldn't be here. And um, <laughs> And so I went into sales. And I sold life and health insurance in the early 90s and got into telecom. And back, you know, most of your, some of your audience probably don't even know what pagers are, but, you know, I sold beepers and pagers and then got into telecom and phones and so on. And, and, you know, in 2001, I, I got into, um, my first business. I bought a dry cleaners. My father was my partner and, and so on. So it's just been a long, just journey of just craziness, fun. I've never had a bad job I just didn't love, except I, I will say except one. I was a janitor, and I didn't know, but when I was hired by Circuit City, they hired me for season help only, and the only person who didn't know this was me. <laughs> your, your house is I said, no, 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 no. I work for a living. I mean, I, I know I'm a high schooler, but I, I need money to pay bills. And so um, I'll take whatever job you had. And so anyway, long story short, they said, we got a janitor job. I took it. I did it for about 90 days. And I went to the owner or the uh, VP at the time and said, boss, I love you. And I love this job, but I can't be a janitor no more. There's no way on God's green earth. This, I can't stand it. And, and the next day they called me and offered me a sales job, and their answer was any sales guy who would be a, a janitor uh, because they need a job will do whatever they ask. And so that's kind of my path. And then I got in. I, I left corporate America in 2005, wrote my first book, and the rest is history, man. I, I, I literally live the dream. I, I travel. I do speeches. I do coaching. I work with clients on – It's tough, and and so I always say, if we didn't have employees and we didn't have customers, work would be easy. It'd be a hobby, but it'd be easy. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And uh, so I guess we got a little common ground, you know, because with me owning Easy Pro, which is a power wash and window cleaning company, I just say that you know I'm a glorified janitor as well. So it's uh, it it's good to have you, man. It's good to have uh, you know. I think what really relates with people, especially with my audience, is you know, those humble beginnings, right? Because I just, ah, you know, the guy that's like, oh, I went to Harvard for four years and then I raised $150 million and now I have this company. It's, you know, there's just, it's hard for me to, I, I won't say I, I'm not proud of him, right? Because I don't hate on anybody, but yeah. there's just something about, you know, mopping floors and cleaning toilets, man. That'll really bring you into your, uh, into your humbleness. So uh, it's, it's cool to hear that. What do you think was your big breakthrough? What what was that aha moment that you're like, listen, this is this is what I've got to do. I've got to write some books. I've got to get out here and speak and and coach these people because you know I think I can serve them. Or, or what 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 happened to make to make that shift? You know, for me, it was in 2004, maybe three. Um, my years start to blend, but I was at Sprint for nine years, and I loved working for Sprint. Man, I was a director. Um, eight of those nine years, and and they were good to me, and I loved them, and and I loved going to work every day, and so I started. I was at that time I was the director in California, and I started going to, you know, our partners, Radio Shack, Best Buy, and the leaders said, "Hey, will you come speak at this event?" And we did it to kind of pitch our product, but then it got to, "Hey, come talk to us about leadership," and talk, and and so I started doing these events. As with my customers, and it wasn't a paid event. I would, I'd do it to hopefully get them to sell our products. Next thing you know, it's kind of starting to take a life of its own on, and and literally they nicknamed me the preacher, 
And, <laughs> man, I started loving this thing so much. And, and I think what I love so much about it, DJ, is, I mean, I was, I felt like I was really touching people's lives. I mean, it was just so, it was so awesome to feel so alive when I got done. And, and here's where my, my, my moment was. I went, holy cow, I would rather do this than the job I've loved for nine years. And and I will tell you, it's one thing to have the epiphany of, oh, my God, this is what I want to do. It's another thing to put your money where your mouth is. And that's when I knew I, I had lost my ever-living mind, and my wife was just as nuts because um, – we were willing and did give up absolutely everything we worked for financially to do it. Yeah, man, I, I feel you on that. That's uh, it's it's hard to explain. People that don't, you know, I, I, I tell people this all the time, right? And I've got a really good friend, Keith Calvis, that's who we're doing our event in Detroit with here next week, and him and I are like, this is our calling, man. Like we, you know, I'm only 30. So like the good thing about, I always say in entrepreneurship, like you don't peak out like in pro sports, right? Like 30 to 35, whatever. You, I don't care what sport you're playing. That's your prime. And then it just goes downhill after that. In entrepreneurship, we get to play this game until we're 80. And, and especially what really helped my mindset was when I started saying, all right, I want to speak. And I used to get a lot of pushback when I was 25, 26, 27. It was that you're young. You don't know what you're talking about. But it didn't matter because if I got in front of an audience of 40 people and two people came up afterwards and like had tears in their eyes and they're like, man, you really touched me. There's no amount of money in the world that, that can hold a candle to that. And so when I'm, I started looking, I started looking at guys like you, you're a little older than me. And you know, there's other big guys out there that are, you know, on these stages rocking out. I'm like, wait a minute. These guys are in their forties, their fifties, their sixties. I got all the time in the world to catch them. And, and it really kind of shifted my mindset to say, DJ, just focus on serving and, and those six people, those 10 people. And, and I think that's so hard for people to understand that, that don't really say, Hey, I want to be a speaker in life. And the challenge is that is because if you're in sales, right? If you're an entrepreneur and you sell something or you want to be a public speaker, there was never a teacher in sixth grade or a guidance counselor in ninth grade that said, Hey, you would be a great salesperson. Like that's never pushed on anybody. They never try to push anybody to sales or police. There's these certain careers that I think have a huge impact in our, in our world that, you know, you just kind of have to find them by flunking out at some other things, right? You got to go be a janitor before you find, you know, your passion sometimes. But, uh, that's all. That's awesome, man. What do you think? Do you remember a speech maybe that you gave that, that, was was there one that you're like, wait a minute, this is this is when I got to put all my marbles in, and what and what really made you say this this one's it? There's no more after this. I'm going all in on this. No, there wasn't. Um, it's crazy, man. Um, two things, you know, I'm a sales guy. I I, I think mm -hmm. sales is the most noble job of any profession. I really do. And I, I think I tell people, yeah, it is, man. It is, it is truly the most noble job. And so when people say, I don't want to be salesy or I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be a salesman. I look at them and say, that's because you have a, a tainted view of what it is. I, I, you don't want to be a con man, but right. salespeople, we make livings. We only make a living when we help people make the right decision. Over and over again, we must get people enthusiastic about something. And, and depending on what you're selling, a lot of the times we're selling people to buy things that they know they need but don't want. And that's a mm. tough play. And so it's a noble job. And I think we got to be proud of it. If, I, if I'm honest, I'm fair with them. I sell with them. And that's kind of where I came from. And so you take that into my speaking business. You know, I loved it, and I would tell – and I make these grand statements, right? When I was a director at Sprint, I kept telling all my family, I'm going to open my own motivational speaker. I'm going to become a motivational speaker, and they would laugh at me and laugh at me. And, oh, yeah. You know, and when I was younger, I was going to be this. And, I, and, and for the most part, I'm still just still, – I'm still a dreamer, man. The only problem is I, uh, I, I work really hard towards that crazy-ass dream. And <laughs> and so my wife thinks I'm nuts, right? I mean, and she used to go – Nathan, I never believed it when you'd say, we're going to do this. We're going to make this money. And I always just thought you were crazy. And and what's even crazier after, you know, over 12 years of marriage, you're still dreaming. And I, now I believe you uh, right or wrong. And, <laughs> and, and so 
um, I think for me, it was my brother called me. I lived in Laguna Beach at the time. And he called me and said, Nathan, are you ever going to start that public speaking business? I said, yeah, man, you know, doing my typical Nathan. And he said, great. I just quit my job. Will you hire me? And I went, well, <laughs> I guess so. So literally 48 hours later, I flew to Texas, incorporated, did the worst presentation. I said, call a film crew, call all people you know. We ran a ballroom. And it was terrible, DJ, terrible. I mean, I'm telling you, if anybody out there wants to be a speaker and want to know what not to do, you call me. I got a whole book of that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of how I got into the business. I literally quit my I, – I went to Sprint, and my boss said, I want a package. And, you know, one thing led to another. My my, my separation from Sprint to do, go do this didn't go the way I planned, which put me in a financial pickle at the same time. But it's also it was kind of God's way of saying, hey, you don't have time to jack around. You better get out there and do it. And so when I did it, man, I had a new wife, two kids. Um, and, I, and, and, you know, at the end of the day – I didn't. Our theory was if we lose everything, shit. We lived in uh, apartments before. I got a loving family. We'll figure it out. And that's kind of that. There you go. That's that was my that's my grand dream. My brother called and said, "Hey, I need a job." You know, and I I ask this on all of my interviews because, and I think that's just conditioning of the minds, right? Like it's like we. You've made it. You're supposed to have this aha moment to share with everybody. But I'll tell you, Nate, that everyone I've interviewed. Damn near the same story, man. I'm like, I'm the same way too. Like there wasn't this like, oh my god, until and probably I don't know if you're still going through this, but till this day, man. I mean, it's still like we're riding the wave one day, and then it's like everything comes crashing down the next. Sure. And I don't. I I think that's really. I don't think there's a loud enough voice out there. There's not enough people talking about that. To let people know that are like entrepreneurs want to start their own businesses because it's so hot right now because the economy's good. It's like, listen, man, I'm 12 years in and it's still not easy, and I don't think it's ever easy. But what you, what I, what I hear when you say that is you were rooted in passion, like you're passionate about that speaking engagement. That's truly where your heart was, and I think that the universe has a way of saying, look, man, you can go a bunch of different ways in your life, but whatever's sown in your heart, that dream, you eventually, and not everybody, but most people eventually come back to it um, if you can find your purpose. And I tell everybody with that, there's an asterisk at the end of that sentence because, you know, there's probably 50, 60 percent of people out there that never do find their purpose. Unfortunately, they just work a job and until their time comes and uh, that's the way life goes. But I, I think I think it's cool that your brother called you guys like, hey, man, it's, it's time to jump off the cliff. We'll build the airplane on the way down, as my buddy Josh Latimer says. <laughs> well, well, what's funny is he says, he says, Nathan, you never give me credit in the books. I said, well, <laughs> Because you were an overhead expense that, holy cow, about bankrupted me, right? And I mean, I employed my entire family at one time, except one brother who's unemployable uh, because he just doesn't have enough drive and passion. Um, but I think to your point, a lot of us, man, just don't um, – some people don't have passion, don't want to find it. It's a scary thing. If, if you're passionate or you think you want to go be an entrepreneur, I tell people there's three rules of being an entrepreneur in this world. Um, mm-hmm. And that is one, you've got to be willing to go broke. And I say broke, I mean sell everything. I mean no house, um, go live with a family member. Throw money member. in a bank account. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean I'm talking nothing. You've got to be willing to go all in because it's, it's, it's going to happen. It, I, I promise you whether it's year one, year 12, it's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, you just got out of the business or died before it got to happen. But that's how being a business owner is, whether it's a big business or small business in my opinion. And then the second thing you got to be willing to do is you've got to be able to work for free for three years and work every single day of every hour of the day. I love it when people say – I want to be my own boss and work my own hours. Good. You're getting them all, all 24 a day. That's going to be yours. <laughs> um, and so, but, but to your point, man, I, I, it's funny. I don't think I've arrived at all. Yet I look back at where I was. It's not winning fast. I mean, what I thought where I am, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, if I can get bits all over. And now I'm thinking – Man, I'm just still just a pup trying to figure this out. And one thing I've learned is we're all just a bunch of people trying to figure it out, no matter how long we've been doing this. Yeah, man. Uh, I like to say that success isn't climbing to the top of the mountain range. It's ex- or not climbing to the top of the mountain. It's exploring the mountain range. Because when you start out, you think there's just one mountain, right? And it's like you get to the peak of that one. 
but then you couldn't see everything else from where you started at. Like, you, you don't even know what's possible. When you get to the peak of that first mountain, you're like, oh, my gosh, well, I think I can make it to that next one. Yeah. The problem is you got to go down and then go back up. Uh, so you said – so there's three things. I want to write these down because I'm going to tweet these out. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter if you aren't. Uh, hashtag Coach Carol on all social media. Nathan, are you on Twitter? You do much tweeting? Oh, a little audio cut out there. Uh, are you on Twitter? Are you on Twitter much? Do you do much tweeting? I, I am on Twitter. Um, okay. But I just push the Twitter button on my phone and it comes on. I mean, I'm, I am so bad, DJ. I should hire you for social media because I'm so bad at it. My my wife and my office manager really help me. And like they'll say, okay, push that button or give it to me and I'll post it. And then I respond back, as you know. So I'm really good at responding to comments. I'm not yeah. real good at hold, the whole thing. So I, I basically say, hey, say this. And then they say, well, make sure you say your hashtag. And I'm like, okay, hashtag Nathan, is that me? And they're like, no, it's hashtag Nathan Jamal. And so I say, like my Facebook page. And then they're like, Nathan, you're telling everyone to like your personal Facebook page. I'm like, I don't know. I know there's two different ones. I just don't know how to get to one versus the other. And so I'm terrible, man. Um, yeah, man. No, that's, that's cool. So, so hashtag Nathan Jamel. So you said, because uh, I think I interrupted you. I apologize. Right. But it was, uh, there were three things if you want to be an entrepreneur. Be willing to go broke, work for free for three years. And then what was the last one? Work every hour of every day for ah, three okay. years. And I don't use three years as some random number. I don't know why that's the magical number. I don't know the answer. All I know is if you do it faster, congratulations. If you do, if it takes you longer, well, you're just not going as fast as some. But if you can't do three, you'll never make it. And I mean, listen, there's a lot of talk about entrepreneurship, and, and you know, I know we're going to go on off till here, but I don't think there's enough talk about skill, right? Because much like sports, the challenge with this is right, and like, and and I think this is, you know, I'm a millennial, and so I try to say I'm the leader of millennials because we're in the participation trophy era right now. But because of that, you know, it's people think. Well, I can be anything I want to be. And my mom told me that growing up. Luckily, I just ha I got the tops to be able to go into sales and do entrepreneurship. But, like, you can be a bad entrepreneur and be broke for three years, and it's never going to work out. And I think that's, like, no one ever says that to anybody. <laughs> oh, there, there, but, he, but here's the th reason, in my opinion. I think you're right. By the way, I don't think millennial – I have a millennial son, um, and, and I, I don't think millennials get enough credit because not all of them are lazy. Um, oh. But they're in a different work environment, right? I mean, you people can make money not just going to get a job or going to college now, and, and God bless them. Um, but at the same time, I, I know a lot of lazy fifty-year-olds just as lazy as I do as, as me as I do twenty-year-olds. But being good, yeah. So, but let me go back into that what you're talking about. What you need skills. I do believe that selling skills is the core. You, if you'll get a sales job before you open your own business, you'll be a better business owner. Because 110%. a lot of people have a lot of great products, a lot of great service. The biggest problem is no one knows about them. And so you've got to learn how to sell before you can learn how to create or serve. And so I think everyone should go into sales. I, my daughter is 16. I'm begging her. She's a, got a, a babysitting and tutoring business. I'm like, I'll go with you, but let's go <laughs> knock on some doors. I'm like, do you know how many people would pay me? Did, would, would be so excited to have me go with them. Not, not, not in an arrogant way, but would say, Nathan Jamel's going to go knock on doors with me. And my daughter goes, I would pay you to quit asking me. <laughs> um, but I, I think, I think you're right. But I think there's two reasons why business owners fail. One is they're not, they get scared or they don't, they didn't prepare enough. They didn't go all in. So they either run out of money, effort, or time, or fear overtakes them. That's the first reason. Mm -hmm. The second reason is they don't know how to sell what they make or serve. And so mm. got a great business, got a great product, just got no way to sell it. And so I think those are the two things, to your point, is why so many small businesses fail. It's not because it's impossible. It's that you got to have a couple of things. And the one is you got to have the, the, the stamina and the financial stamina to do the work and, and survive it. And then, two, got to be able to sell it. Yeah. I, I tell everybody, you know, when I was a senior in high school, I was going to be a chemical engineer and aced AP chemistry. And I remember the day I went in to tell my chemistry teacher, like, hey, I started mowing grass on the side and like I'm making some pretty decent money. 
I think I'm going to make a run at this and like be an entrepreneur and build this business. I remember my chemistry teacher looking me in the eye and she said, DJ, you'll never be as successful trying to be an entrepreneur as you would if you just went to college, got your chemical engineering degree and got a job. And that was like chip number one that went on my shoulder. And so I tell people all the time that like, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, the rule number one is you have to believe in yourself when no one else does because it's all rah rah when you very first get started. But when you start hitting those bumps and it gets a little rough, people are real quick to change their tune and say, maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe you should go get that job. And that's and that self-doubt is cancer for an entrepreneur, man. Well, and I'm OK with your point. I, I, I'm great with people. I have friends of mine who are very successful who work for corporations. I love corporations. Absolutely. I think you've got to chase your – I don't think your passion has to be owning your own business. I just think you've no. got to love getting up every day. Yeah. Absolutely. You gotta be happy. That's where it all has to be rooted out of. Like, if you can't be a happy human being, nothing else matters. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. So, uh, so then speaking about that happiness and stuff, what, what are you passionate about? You know, what's your why? What makes you, when you wake up in the morning, what makes you happy? Why do you smile? You know, my passion is, I, I literally watch YouTube videos um, and, and movies because I, I really like and I listen to my I think my passion is to just feel in a moment of goodness all the time, right? Just kind of – I told myself this morning while I'm driving, I talk to myself a lot while I'm doing audio books, and, and I'm like, man, just do what you – just do you today. Just do what you love, and and, and whether I'm, I'm going on a client meeting, just just shit, just have fun. And so I think yeah. my passion is is trying to help people have fun. I'm, you know, I'm just like everyone else. I, I mean, someone cuts me off and I get mad. And I'm like, why are you getting mad? And in <laughs> fact, I want to just make people. I, I was traveling through the airports yesterday. I went through three airports, and you know, my my whole goal yesterday was I'm gonna make every TSA member person just smile a little bit. And so you know, <laughs> that's you know, a hard task to do. Yeah. Man. So <laughs> I don't know why I just did it, but it, so I think my passion. I mean, I just want to be that guy that people say, you know, Nathan Jamel, and they literally laugh and smile and say, yeah, I know that crazy guy. I mean, that, I want that. I, um, I want my wife to, to, to come home and, and, and still be in love, not love me, but be in love. I want my kids to be proud of me. I don't I, I just want to do me, man. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Awesome. All right, so uh, let's let's hop over to your biggest lesson on success as far. I know we've covered a ton of Like, if you're listening to this podcast right now, uh, I hope you're taking notes because Nathan is just dropping knowledge bombs on you like crazy. But uh, what's your biggest lesson on success this far? Success has nothing to do with money. Ah, I love that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause, you know, sometimes when we're making the most money, we're the, we're the most down. Um, and when we're making the least, we're the most up. And I, I think success for me is the ability to operate every day without the fear of tomorrow. I'm literally just wrote that mm. as I said it to you. Um, and I don't know why that came out of my mouth, but that's it. It's that, man, how, how Here's here's what I've, I've noticed. No matter whether someone lost their job, um, had to file bankruptcy or whatever, financial problems are always short term. They always they always people always work their way out of them for the most part. Yet the fear and the stress and the pain those things cause tend to last for a long time. And I think if we can stay focused on just just plug away, man, just lay a brick. Lay a smile, lay a brick, and lay a smile. And I, I think, I think if we, if we, and I, by the way, I'm giving this wisdom to people. Know that I have to constantly remind myself to take it. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't speak from a place of, of knowledge of I trust. Listen to me. Do it as I do. I say, listen to me. I just told myself this five minutes ago. Yeah. Um, and so Absolutely. that, that I think is that I, is, I, I believe is what success is about. Well, you know, Napoleon Hill talks about that. He says that, you know, the the person that gets the most benefit out of a seminar or a lecture is the presenter because, you know, the person sitting in the audience is getting one person's view to where when we get on stage and get a presenter, we're getting multiple views. Uh, and also, like to always say, remind people, like, there's nurses that smoke, right? <laughs> like, yeah. there's unhealthy, overweight nurses. Like, you work in a hospital every day and see what not to do, and, like, people still don't take that medicine, so to speak. So, um, yeah. Yeah, man, that's that's good stuff. All right, fire around. Five DJ, questions. 
TJ, real huh? quick to your point. To your point, you know, mm-hmm. my wife went on speech with me one time, and someone says, "Oh my!" Goes to my wife. My wife, if you ever met her, she, her book just came out, Surrender, it, which is got some cuss words in it, so you don't read it in front of the kids. But um, <laughs> you know, she she kind of speaks her mind, and I'll never forget. I had done the speech, and the couple of ladies walked to my wife and said, "Oh my gosh, it must be so awesome to be married to him. Does he just wake up happy every day?" And my wife's looking, I'm going, "Oh yeah, it's a real joy." <laughs> Right, because she's like, it's not always like this. Right? <laughs> it's not, man. It's a struggle, and everybody goes through it. And you know, I think we're we're really moving into this um, anti-guru moment, if you will. Right? Is that people really connect with guys like you and I that are like, look, man, we don't have it all figured out. We struggle with it every day because when you know when Zig Ziglar's guys, you know, and Jim Rohn, those guys were around. That wasn't what got you on stage. Like you had to have it all figured out, and it's just like. That's not how real life is, man. It's, yeah. it's a grind every day. You always have to work on it. That's why I wake up every morning. I do my Tony Robbins breathing exercise and I read my goals because that's what like gets me locked in and focused. And I can tell you that if I don't do that in the morning, my girlfriend Tori can tell the difference. She's like, yeah. you haven't meditated today, have you? And I'm like, yeah, okay. That's right. Sorry. That's right. All right, All man. Right. So fire, uh, fire around here uh, again. We're, your first one is going to be your favorite business book that you haven't written, but you've got a book come out. Tell, tell us a little bit about that, real quick, before we get this. All right, fire real quick, around. the book that comes out is "Serve Up, Coach Down," and okay. um, this is real simple. Servant and leadership books of the past. I've always talked about serving those who you lead, and I believe that to be a mistake. I believe the way you serve those you lead is you coach them. And think of it as like raising kids. If you do everything for your children, you take all their problems away, you raise entitled children. Not that anybody at 40 or 50 years old knows anything about raising entitled children, i.e. <laughs> us. Um, or, or you can love your children and, 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 and demand uh, things out of them and, and, and make them be better persons. And, and, and as, as, as parents, we call it parenting, right? And as, uh, in business, we call it coaching. So, that's the coach down piece. The real big piece of serve up is that why is it okay to serve a guest or a home, but not serve those who help us pay for our home? A lot of us sit there and think, I'm employee. I want to be the guy that my boss and my company counts on. I want to be the guy that my people want to follow. I want to be the guy that you say, you need to get done, call Nathan. And serving up is about doing things that are right in the organization, which means when the, when the people who we follow and work for say, we're going to change and we're going to go this direction, we don't ask why to debate. We ask why to understand and do it. And when we can have that that serve up uh, pro- belief process, we don't have to get buy-in because when you have belief, you don't need buy-in. And so change moves faster because you're not spending six months convincing those you're paying to change when we don't have to convince those paying us. It makes no sense. And so serve right. up means I, you pay me, I believe in you, and I'm gonna. And when you do that, you have alignment from top to bottom. And that's what the book's about. Love it, man. Do you have a copy of it so we can see what it looks like? It looks like this. Damn, there is serve up coach down. And yep. uh, when's when's that dropping? Can they pre order it on Amazon or where? pre order on Amazon or NathanJamel.com, but definitely Amazon has the pre orders. Um, okay. they're taking them now and I believe it comes out October eighteenth. Awesome. Very cool, man. All right, so uh, favorite business book besides one that you've written. Okay, that's tough. No. Um, no, it's <laughs> easy for me. My favorite book, uh, I have a I have two. Um, and one is Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, man. Which you rep, you uh, referenced Napoleon Hill earlier. Um, and, and ironically enough, in Napoleon's, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, he says, as business, listen, and this is good news for you, we don't hit our peak until 40 or 50 years old. And I realize this book was written in the 40s. So that yeah. could be 40 to 70 now. Um, yeah. So we got a lot of time to, to, to continue to peak. Um, so that's my favorite book. My second favorite book is How to Win Friends and Influence People. I read both of them every year. Yeah, man. They're good. I, I actually, I'm in the middle of reading Think Your Girl Rich now. I haven't read it in about two years, and it's amazing how much more it makes sense to me and the different things that I'm getting out of it now compared to the last time I read it. Um, uh, DJ, I've read it three times this year. Well, I've listened to it. I do audio books. I, I listen to audio every single morning. 
Yeah, I, I actually, I was surprised. I'm, I'm proud of myself that I didn't butcher up your about uh, your page because I'm mildly dyslexic, uh, so it's it's really hard for me to read. I was like, I practiced that about six times before the interview, so I was like, I'm gonna make it through this. That, well, get the audio book. I read that myself. You'll like that. Yeah. Man. Uh, favorite place to travel to? Costa Rica. Costa Rica, nice. Uh, favorite charity to donate to? You know, anything with children. Um, Love it. Yeah, any, I mean, I, I, um, as a father of four, uh, anything with kids and, and my church and, and my church. Yeah. And you know, uh, if you're listening to the podcast right now, you're probably like thinking like, why am I asking these questions? You know, with me, I always say that the foundation of, of entrepreneurship is to dream more. You've got to have a dream first. You have to be more. You've got to grow as a person. You've got to do more because whatever you're putting in right now, I promise you, you've got more inside of you. And all of that builds up so that you can have the ultimate uh, gift of entrepreneurship, which is to give more. So uh, always like to do that. And uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years, man? Sitting right here on the computer talking to you. Um, <laughs> I do, man. I see myself doing this um, until people no longer pay me. I, my, my, someone says, what's your goal? I said, my, my goal is to, is to uh, make a great living, be on stage 100 days out of the year, and, oh, yeah. and, 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 and have my kids with me. And, you know, we're building a self-sustainable ranch right now. We're going to build, we're gonna build a self-sustainable ranch in the next 24 months and trying to figure out oh, where nice. we're going to have it. Yeah, we got a spot looked in Texas and a spot looked uh, a spot in Maui. I'm, I'm personally being a Texan. I would prefer Texas, but you know who knows. I don't yeah. make decisions. My wife does. So, right. yeah, I see myself um, doing this uh, and and just living the dream, brother. Yeah, man, I love it. Awesome. And then the uh, last thing here is how can people find you? And we might have to reach out to your assistant on this to get your social links. But I'm just joking. Uh, I mean, obviously, NathanJamel.com. Uh, you can find his books on Amazon. How, how else? Yeah, so I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter, which I, I guess is hashtag NathanJamel or something like that. Okay. Right. Yeah, and then I have Nathan Inst- Jamel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and then I have an Instagram page, um, Nathan Jamel. You know, I really should know this. I know. It's terrible. And then I definitely want – you need to like my page on Facebook, which is uh, Nathan Jamel. And um, and so, you know, I you know, I probably should get some help on this considering I have like a whole week of interviews for the new book coming up. Um, but, yeah, I'm on all the – I think if you type my name in all of them, don't they? Don't I just show up, DJ? Isn't that how it works? Yeah, I mean, you're – yeah, you've got a pretty unique name. So, uh, and and so here's a free free tip for you, I guess. Uh, what I did was, if we post content, nine times out of ten, it's got hashtag Coach Carol at the end of it. And so, the the what I think a lot of people miss the boat on these hashtags is they think, you know, obviously hashtag entrepreneurship, it's going to get you traffic, and that's what a lot of people use hashtags for. Yeah. I saw early on that if I made something around my brand hashtag Coach Carol, then I can just tell anybody. Whatever your favorite social media platform is, go there and type in hashtag Coach Carroll. You'll find me. Now, I didn't take into account that Pete Carroll, the head coach of Seattle oh, Seahawks. Oh, that's uh, awesome. you know, So really, you know, luckily we don't look alike. He's got a lot of white hair. I've got no hair. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty easy to find the difference in us. But, yeah, what we'll do is I'll, I'll, go, I'll go on my social media platforms. And also, if you guys are listening to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, um, it's on all the platforms the podcast is. You may be watching the video on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube or you go to my YouTube channel, I'll uh, I'll go find Nathan's link and put them all in the description below. Yeah. <laughs> I think I am hashtag Nathan Jamal. Because I see that a lot when um, that gets down. <laughs> Love it, man. Awesome. Well, Nathan, I really appreciate you coming on, man. It's been a, a joy and a pleasure and an honor of mine to uh, – I feel like I'm kind of looking into the future, man, and seeing somebody that's uh, going down the path that I, I hope to one day go and pursue. And uh, I appreciate you giving so much knowledge and wisdom and, and your time because I know it's very valuable. It's our most valuable resource as entrepreneurs um, to, our, to our listeners here all over the world in the sales factory, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks, brother. Take care. All right. All right.
Hey, it's Coach Carol. Thanks so much for listening in to the Sales Factory Podcast. Congratulations, you made it through another episode and you didn't fall asleep. No, just kidding. Uh, I hope you're really enjoying this. Uh, I enjoy putting this together for you and and it really um, helps me fulfill my purpose in life and to contribute back to entrepreneurs just like myself. So if you got any value out of this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and please leave us a review. Uh, It'll help us to uh, reach more people, which is awesome because the more people we can help, the better off, right? And uh, just want to say again, congratulations. I honor your commitment to grow as a person, to grow as an entrepreneur so that you can provide for your family and for your own dreams and your community. And uh, until next time, here's to your success.